Henry Norman. Well, let me tell you. I was just about to hand it back and say, hey, man, right box, wrong name. And then I felt it. <laughs> One of those lovely little plastic rectangles that spells out instant credit. It seems old Big Ugly, the giant computer that keeps trying to stick numbers on people, finally blew one. And I must say, it couldn't have happened to a nicer group, even though it was a mistake. Henry Norman. <laughs> you make a weird R. Norman. Oh, I get to be Mrs. Mrs. Henry Norman. Okay. And a second. Mrs. Henry Norman. Henry's a bigamist. <laughs> just in case someone says there's no such man. Here he is, personally pasted together out of computer sheets. There we go. Yay, terrific. Bravo, Joe. I think this calls for a celebration, a little toast. Go ahead. Uh, to the first 21st century man. To a new spring coat. To the computer who giveth all, may he never taketh away. Uh. <laughs> Um, to Henry Norman. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. here, here. Man, at least listen, will you? I mean, look at it this way. Haven't you ever wanted to step out of computer theory and take a little shot at the whole number system? Look around you. We're not students here. We're, we're numbers, computers, man. That's where it is. They pick your courses, grade your papers, and turn out your lights at night, and they even turn on the sprinklers. I'm sorry, Jerry. I told you before. Hey, come on, I'm asking you for your help. I mean, what do you want me to say? Look, it's not just me. There are three others in trouble. All right, what happened? Well, the bank is about to bust poor old Henry Norman. It's gonna take a genius to bail him out. And you're it, pal. <laughs> Come on. Should be here any second, I hope. Welcome to Cabal. 
all, Abe. Your friend, the giant brain, has been giving us a hard time. You know, Joe, the prodigy? This here is Lisa, life of linguistics. Hello? And this is Karen McMillan. Hi. Hi. She knows absolutely nothing about computers, so don't be too pleased to meet her, all right? I'm trying to get close to her myself. Anybody down there? Nope. Well, should we get started? I understand you're into something like advanced computer cybernetics and theory or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. The incredible Henry Norman card, from whence all credit springs. The way I figure it. The way we figure it. There is a Norman Henry living in town. We looked him up. The giant brain apparently reversed the name and address and sent it to Joel's post office. An obvious computer goof, right? Meant for a rich townie, and it comes to an underage, impoverished member of a despised minority, a student. So we started using it. I mean, what else are we going to do? It's illegal. It's not illegal, it's credit. It's very American to have credit, Avery. In fact, it's uh, more American to use it. It's not illegal, honest. We open this account, and we all kick in when we get money from home. The bills do get paid. I don't know. Don't you see, Avery? Nobody will give students credit because they don't own anything. The problem is the computer has caught its mistake. The bank sent us, I mean, Henry Norman, this credit questionnaire, lousy with suspicion. Hey, Jerry. I don't get it. Exactly how's he going to make the bank believe there is a Henry Norman when there's no such person? Well, don't ask me, babe. I am just a poor, dumb med student. I only practice on that thing now and then. He makes it sing. Come on. figured, Abe, we ought to be able to satisfy the bank through our computer here, seeing as how it's the biggest one in the area. A lot of companies like Seacoast National should have their computers tied in by phone line. That's right. It's called time sharing. Then all their files and records are in this memory bank here, right? That's exactly right. Oh, wow. Do you mean you can create an entire Henry Norman in here? It's theoretically possible. We don't need a complete Henry Norman, though. Let me have that paper, Joe. What we need to do is lay a little background on it. This is the profile we want. Here, Joe. He's 35. Engineering degree from here, then a master's from MIT. Employed at Dynatech, 28 thou a year. I'd say that's a pretty solid citizen. I think Big Ugly's gonna love him. Now, this could take quite a bit of time. You see, each company has its own codes. So it may take dozens of code combinations to get the computer to give me the bank records. Well, yeah, but you can do it, baby. Come on. Sit down. Joe, lock that door, will you? What does that mean? I'm just identifying myself to the computer. It's called logging in. Hey, how'd he get you to do this? Threaten to shoot your grandmother or something? Come on, let him do his number, will you? Okay, I took the original mistake, 
and the computer correction and wiped them out of the memory banks. <laughs> so your Henry Norman is laid in just like you wanted him. <laughs> Look at that, man. He's even thanking us for the account. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well take the programs, but then you won't need me. You know what we've done, gang? We've defied all the laws of nature. That's what we've done. We've created a living, breathing, spending man out of sheets of paper and little plastic cards. <laughs> Everybody over the wagon wheel, we are going to celebrate. It's all on Henry Norman. Here, Joe, you hang on to these. Give me that. You'll be staying sober. Why always me? You know why. Uh, the prodigy here, he can't drink, you know. He's a uh, hypoglycemiac. Hypoglycemiac. That's low blood sugar. Well, you think a promising young doctor would know how to say that, right? <laughs> Come Thanks, on. Abe. Come on. The party's for you, too. No, I shouldn't. I've got some work to do. You look guilty. Do you feel bad about playing games with the almighty brain? I don't know. Maybe I should. Oh, come on. Now, as graduate medical students, you all might as well get to know Proto. Prototype patient, model two. An advance, we think, on the original at Caltech. He's not a bad sort, doesn't complain about the bill, and I think he'll give you all the symptoms you'll need to look for. Jerry? Movement. Pulse. Respiration. Even down to skin tone. And if he's not treated right, he's even programmed to die for you. Knight King Bishop Six. Queen to King Bishop Three, and score another one for Big Ugly the Giant Brain. Checkmate. Oh, no. I'll be darned. I'm finished. Well, you lasted longer than last time. I've got it programmed to see three moves ahead now. If I can get it up to four, you'll have to take up bridge. Mm. <laughs> what have you got programmed for spring vacation? You going home? No, I never go home unless I have to. Well, then you're going to have free access to the machine. Yeah, I know. That's why we're all staying, because we love our computer. <laughs> <laughs> Linguistics, sentence 13. Run, John. C. John Run. Very good. Oh, hi, Fletch. Would you like to check this program for me when you get a chance? Oh, yeah. What's the matter? Can't get her to talk? Oh, I'm getting it. Knows its vowels. And now I'm teaching it to recognize fricatives. Mm. But you know, once it can talk, I'll bet it has nothing to say. Either that or it'll talk your head off. Yeah, well. <laughs> Run, John, see John, run. Uh, Lisa, I got a friend here who wants to meet you. What? Say hi. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here, you nut. Come on, Proto, we're gonna go over and see Joe. Wake up, Joe. We got trouble. Oh, no, not again. What's wrong with him this time? He's got kidney failure. Or so it was diagnosed by three of my classmates. I guess so, he's not even breathing. <laughs> he's not plugged in, you dummy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, he's got a short somewhere down here around his navel. Doc Benjamin says, get that bright kid Joel running down or I'm going to have to send it back to Caltech. And I said, not a chance that Joel is into probabilities and game theories these days. Good, because actually he makes me a little sick. I said, not a chance unless it's for me. Oh, I got to remind you again, right, that I fought for you in Vietnam? Here, sit down there. It's the duty of overbright pathetics like you. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll tie him into the computer. And I don't know why I got to worry about kidneys. Allergy, that's where the bread is. No night calls, no buddy dying on you. Just line them up, zap, zap, zap. Six bucks a head, thank you very much, ma'am. You are strange.
Hey, uh, Proto's beginning to look like Avery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I talk to you a minute, Avery? Oh, sure. Uh, you know, I've been playing chess a lot with Joel, and he, uh, well, to put it mildly, he's a high verbal. He talks too much. He's been telling me about this fictitious guy that you created with a computer. A fictitious guy? Joel showed me the program sheets. Oh. Do you think it's a good idea? I mean, for you? Well, I just thought it was sort of a prank, you know. I know, but I just don't want to see anybody get into trouble. It wasn't my idea. But they couldn't do it without you. You're the only student who's capable out of all. I get the feeling I'm being discussed. Not exactly, unless you've begun to identify very strongly with Henry Norman. What'd you tell him? He didn't tell me. Look, Fletch, but will you? You're an employee here. Just keep the machines running. Don't try and run our lives, all right? I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, we need counseling. We'll go to the counseling center. Okay. You're right. It's none of my business. See you later, Ray. Paternalistic creep will be lucky if he doesn't fake on us. I'll tell you, Jerry, I don't care if he does. You got no business talking to him like that. Just count me out. I don't want anything more to do with it. Treating us like criminals. Hi. 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 Who is? What happened? Our Henry has uh, received another letter from our friends at the bank, and they would like to know, in no uncertain terms, why Dynatech has no record whatsoever of his employment. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. We better close up the account quick. To close up an account, one must pay up an account. We were behind almost 100 bucks before these new bills came in. There's my new spring coat. Fifty bucks. Joe, why do you keep it so hot in here? It's the temperature of the brain. I think better. <laughs> Here's one, a pair of shoes, low heel, blue and white. Mine. We're up the creek. There's at least a hundred dollars here and probably more. We haven't even... Wait a minute now, don't panic. I mean, we knew this was bound to happen sooner or later. They run checks on charge accounts periodically, right? Dynatech is a timeshare on our computer. What we need is a complete Henry Norman. Get him on the Dynatech payroll, then get him a social security card, a complete employment record. I mean, everything a real person would have. He'll be more complete than I am. <laughs> but how can we? Avery's the only one who knows how, and he doesn't want any more to do with it. Well, there's one way. What? One person. I couldn't do that to Avery. Why not? Hey, what's this? A gun. Who bought a gun already? Well, somebody bought it. Kay's hardware. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we all have duplicate cards now. Why couldn't Avery have one? Avery. Avery. Hold on. Maybe it was Henry Norman. The real Henry Norman. Who's alive and well. And living in the heart of the computer. Cut it out, Joel. It's creepy. Whoever's playing jokes. I don't like it. Henry Norman, please stand up.
Dave. Hi. Your landlord told me just to come on back. Can I come in, Eva? Oh, sure. Sure, sorry. Uh, I didn't realize that you were here to see me. Well, there's not much of anything else to see over to you. Some beer, would you like a beer? Yeah. Thanks. Here. <laughs> you know, this is probably the only place in the whole school I won't have to drink it out of a can in order to keep from getting a disease off the glass. <laughs> that was a compliment, Avery. I think. Oh, thank you. Where'd you learn to make such neat hospital corners? In the army, Avery? No, I wasn't in the army. Uh, how's Jerry? Why? I hope you don't think that I'm Jerry's property or anything like that. As a matter of fact, Jerry sent me here. To con you into doing something you don't want to do. Boy, you're kind of direct. <laughs> well, six years of psych, I guess I'm entitled. Are you in psychiatry? Please. Psychology. I have my master's. I work at the outpatient clinic. That's why I'm interested in you, Avery. I'm curious what it means when you have the neatest, most spartan room in the history of U.S. education. Well, what does it mean when you keep using my name? You must have called me Avery three or four times. Well, that means I'm trying to make contact. You are kind of a remote guy. <laughs> Avery. Hey, what's this? Mm -hmm. Looks kind of complicated. Oh, no, it's not. This is simple binary. Binary? You yeah, have a binary system. This is 13. The number 13. It's base 2. Usually you count in units of 1, 10, 100. You count in blocks of 2. 2, 4, 8, and so on. And 1 is a yes, count it. 0 is a no, don't count it. That's the way computers talk to each other. I don't think I understand. I don't think I ever could. Um, what's Jerry want? Oh, you can guess. It's, uh, Henry Norman again. Listen, I didn't want to come here, but the others did it. <laughs> Anything I say is going to sound like a con. Look, you don't have to get involved anymore if you don't want to. I'll just tell Jerry to lay off. No sweat. Well, let me ask you something. What would you like me to do? It's incredible. No kidding. He's put Henry Norman into every computer in the country, and he's even got a driver's license. Well, how'd you manage that, genius? Well, some states have computerized their motor vehicle files. They don't require fingerprints, so I just patched it in the phone lines. Have you two been here all night? 
Love among the real stats, huh? We got here early this morning. He's been saving your neck while you were in the sack. There you are, Jerry. Henry Norman exists. Social security number, draft card. Draft card? Of course, he's over age. Mm. You look terrible. Actually, I was studying most of the night. I had to drop Joel off this morning at the hospital. He's got that low blood sugar thing. And I bet you got him loaded? No, sweat. They'll change his diet, give him a shot. Well, I have to go to the clinic later on. I'll drop in on him. But right now, we have to have breakfast. Right. Hey, listen. I mean, with this, I can get all the girls I want. I just charge it. Well, don't run up too big a bill. He was only 17. He used to pretend he was 19. All his life he wanted to be older, as old as his mind. Who's going to tell his parents? I've already called him. I was wondering if you wouldn't go over and collect his things. Sure. Here. You can take this, too. I'll arrange for the shipping. Avery? You go on ahead. I'll be over in a couple of minutes. somehow got the wrong instructions from the computer's daily pharmaceutical list. They've asked me to check out its programming. The manager lives in the back.
Karen. 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 Are you all right? What happened? Uh, it was that dumb effigy Joe made. Uh, I'm sorry. He must I think for a minute I thought it was him. The door was open when I got here. Somebody must have been here. Only me. I guess we're all here for the same thing, huh? I was just down in the basement looking through Joe's things, and there's nothing much here except Joe's chest there. What exactly were you looking for? Anything the kid bought on credit. We're gonna have to send it back. Well, we weren't all exactly that fast on our feet. But Fletcher just told us to come over here and pick up some of his things. Well, you don't mind if I indulge in a little self-interest, do you? Wild horses couldn't stop you. Hey, please. I think we should end this business with Henry Norman. You know, you were never really a part of this whole trip anyway, except to do your little number. Jerry. I've had it with all this sanctimonious jazz. Please, Jerry. Please. Well, if he wasn't such a computer freak, a sick one at that, he would know enough just to bug out when he wasn't wanted. Oh, boy, you were such an incredible inhuman slob. Only on alternate Thursdays and when I'm nervous. This must be Thursday. Lisa. You know, he had it up to four moves ahead. I wouldn't have had a chance then. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, does it? We can create a perfect world in our heads. Joel could. Logical, clean, and pure. And everything works out precisely right. But in the real world, there are too many variables. Yeah, I can't even figure out what went wrong. What? The computer error at the Met Center. I mean, the central computer here should have some memory of its mistake, shouldn't it? I can't find it. Maybe you could. No. I'm a student, not an employee. I'm sorry, Avery. Just let me alone, will you? Let me alone. You can come in now. Let's see, your file 4D. You can go into the doctor's office and bring your file in.
broken. Broken.
for me, Elisa. Or what? I just hate to see you crying. Why? Because I'm showing my emotions? At least I have some, Avery. can run this whole building. It runs the whole college, Sheriff. We mean those functions which are electrical mostly, the light security systems, the elevator. And you're the one that runs it. You understand that thing? No. No, I'm just a technician, really. You're gonna need somebody on the level of theory. The computers are a new world. Yeah, that's what they tell me. everyone is gone for the vacation period. But I did put in a call to Dr. Eddie at Michigan State. He's one of the few who may be able to help. Or that young man, Avery Jensen. He knows as much about these things as anyone else. He doesn't seem very anxious to see us. Avery's a brilliant student, but he's abnormally shy. Also, he knew the dead girl. You know, if there's anything I don't look forward to, it's spending some time with a brilliant student who's abnormally shy. seen a lot of people die, maybe too many. I feel lousy about Joe and Lisa. I just haven't hung out any signs, okay? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Jerry. I, I even snapped at poor Avery. Yeah, poor Avery. Listen, Jerry, I think we should take Henry Norman out of the computer. I can't explain it. Forget but... it. But I've got this feeling. Look, I said forget it. I'm here on a scholarship, and they got a funny morals clause. There's not enough money in the account to close out Henry Norman without the whole roof falling in. You get kicked out of school nowadays, you don't get back in anywhere. So we'll just let Henry sleep in the computer for a while, and we'll all just keep our pretty mouth shut. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. By any chance that you happen to explain this to Avery before you sucked him in? Listen, Dave. Stop worrying about Avery and start worrying about yourself. Stay away from him. Tell me what to do. If five of us created Henry Norman, two-thirds of the survivors are standing right here. Now, that's two deaths in two weeks, connected to the computer. How are you trying to say? That you better face it while you still got a chance. There's only one person who has that kind of control over the computers. I think it might be special delivery. Thank you.
You're going to need one. Where's Avery? I figure he's going to be here in about 10 minutes. Keeps a pretty tight schedule, you know that, Avery. How could you do this? What? what does this mean? Oh, you tell me. Did you find what you were looking for? Go and show it to him. I found it in Lisa's slave unit. Why didn't you tell somebody, like the police or somebody? Maybe because that's a message to the machine, not from it. Jerry, cut it out. Let's see what else you've got. Henry Norman, general delivery. Mm -hmm. Where's the ticket? Where does it come from? I sent away for it to the Bureau of Records. I just wrote a letter in his name and asked for a copy. Wait a minute, I don't get it. He exists. Look at it. We created him in the computer. But now there's actual documents. I found a transcript in the administration files. His old school records, clear back to grammar school. I didn't put any of that in the computer. You gave him things like the degrees, the job record. But not this. I didn't do any of that. Something's happened. I tried to erase him. I wiped the memory banks clean. You what? I went back to the computer and I erased everything. But now it's all back in. I just came from there. It's all laid back just like it was. We can't control him. The computer's thinking in billionths of a second, erasing its own errors simultaneously. We can't do anything about it. Who says this? That you could have made up some phony documents, huh? And if the program is still in the computer, it's because you never took it out! Why not? Why not? I just don't know. Why? That's all. I just don't know why. But I'm warning you, Avery, you stay away from me. I am not Joel and I am not Lisa. So don't mess with me. Well, I'm warning you, Jerry. Keep away from the computers and stay out of that place. Why? What are you afraid I'll find out? Huh? What are you afraid I'll find out? You better come with me. No. Karen? I'm staying. He's upset. He's a little drunk. He might do anything. He might go to the police, the administration, anything. Well, I can't do anything about that. No, but I can if I go after him. Well, go ahead.
out completely destroyed the boy in the morgue doesn't look too good either now this thing takes in different amounts of electricity right yes depending on how complex the function the voltage was too high there must have been at least a thousand volts when he touched it but the regulator yeah i know i know it's uh, controlled by the computer another accident well we're going to get other people in the company to work on it and Maybe they can figure something out. Well, if you can't figure it out, I sure can. All I know is I could have two, maybe three murders here. I can't prove a thing. Son? Sir? You're the politest murder suspect I've ever had. Uh, get those things off of them. Sorry about those handcuffs, but you look like the quiet kind of fellow might hurt himself. I've never intentionally hurt anyone in my life. Well, son, I'm going to let you go. Only because I have to. You know, that brain or computer out there, whatever you call it, seems to be a total mystery to everyone around here but you. And it's killed three people. You knew every one of them. And that last boy, now, you didn't like him one bit. You had an argument with him. That much I can't prove. Now, what I'm trying to say is, one of these days you're going to do something, I'm going to get you. That is, if you don't go over the line into Cuckoo Land first. Can I go? Yeah. Son, I'd find myself a good lawyer. I don't need a lawyer. I don't need anyone. He's withdrawing, pulling back into himself more and more. Doesn't give very many details. His problems apparently started as a child. He has a history of mental illness. He was in an institution for three years, and I've concealed that from everybody. You haven't concealed anything. It's a matter of record. Anybody could have checked the files. You're being too rough on yourself, Karen. As a matter of fact, I knew there was something in his past. He told me in so many words once. I never thought anything of it. Maybe if I told Jerry. I'm supposed to be objective, aren't I? Trained to be. And you also know that you can't be objective when it's somebody you care about. No. That's why I asked you to read the file. You seem to understand, Avery. Okay, let's face facts. You might be sick. Very sick. Now, this business about the computers being human, that worries me. But it was through the computer that I found his file. It told me. Or warned me. I don't know which. Oh, come on, Karen. Computers do what people tell them to do. I'm just a technician, but I know that much. Now, who would want you to see that file? Avery? Avery himself? Who else would he ask to help him? Avery? 
I think this is the last place you ought to be. Why? After what happened. Avery? I, I was hoping you trusted me. Do you? I don't know. I think you'd better tell him. I read your file. The one they keep at the psychiatric clinic. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Karen's worried about you, and so am I. We thought perhaps we should contact your parents. My parents are dead. But the file says they're alive. I wrote down their address somewhere. where we lived 20 years ago. Is that where it happened? What? Whatever happened that made you sick and made you go into an institution. Nothing happened. I just have to see. I have to show you. The house will be all boarded up. There's nothing there. No life. I don't believe he killed anyone. Not Jerry, not with a computer. Hey, watch where you're going. You're driving too fast. You handle him, I'll handle the driving. Do you think he ought to be driving so fast? What? Please slow down. You are not a mama's boy. He is a fine boy. And if you were any kind of a man... You don't need a man. You got your little man in the back seat. You don't need your husband, and I don't need you. I'm sick and tired of you and the kids and the whole family. Hey, you leave Avery out of this. You just leave him alone. It'll get you some satisfaction. You grow up to know that you drove your old man right out of it. What is it? He's fine. We were both very lucky. Hmm. But the other? 
she just won't communicate to anyone. He just sits there. Art, the police say he tried to commit suicide. But I know he didn't. I know he didn't. What are they going to do? They're going to keep him here a while, run some tests after that. I, I don't know. I don't believe he did it. I won't believe that. Avery, how are you feeling? Avery, please speak to us. Avery, you don't have to talk. Just listen. Karen and I, oh, we care about you. And we want desperately for you to get well. This shell of yours, it's no good. As far as what you believe about the computer, well, I guess I was the one who scoffed. But you know, we haven't been able to find any rational explanation. And someday we all may have to face the fact that you were right. I don't even know if he can hear you. I'm quitting my job here. Going away. But I'll come back if you want me to. I'll keep in touch. You need friends. I want to be one. nothing whatsoever to do with calculus. Karen, I can think again. I mean, clearly. All this week I've been running equations and logarithms and computations of different kinds through my head. Imagine me practicing thinking. I know a few people who should try. I figured it out. About Henry Norman. Avery, please. I have. I know all about Henry Norman. He's flesh and blood, Karen. He's real. He's alive. Karen, listen to me. I need you. You're the only one I can talk to. And if I don't, it could all slip away. We created a paper man, the five of us. A complete identity, a cloak. A cloak that someone needed desperately. Desperately enough to kill three people in order to keep it a secret. Harry, please. Remember that Jerry gave the original program to Joel. And after Joel died, no one ever found it again. But when I tried to erase everything from the computer, it all reappeared. Because whoever had the program put it back in. 
and my case history sent to you. Someone counted on my cracking up, and I did. I began to think the computer itself was doing it. But it wasn't, Karen. It was a man, a human being. I don't know. I just don't know. And the birth certificate and the school records. We didn't need those, but somebody else did. But it doesn't make any sense. I was involved, too, and nobody's tried to kill me. You weren't a risk. You never worked with computers. You didn't really understand any of this. Well, why? Who would need an identity? Someone who was forced to give up his own. A fugitive. A fugitive with special skills he could never use. I know there's a Henry Norman out there, Karen, and I can find him. All I have to do is strip away the cloak and he'll be there. But I have to get to the master computer for just five minutes. Yes, I'm asking you to help me. I can open the padlock on the window. I know the attendance routine backwards. You pray. I know what you're thinking. You could be helping a madman. A homicidal madman. Every fact seems to point to that. All I can ask you to do is something that I never could. Forget facts. Forget logic. Forget everything that seems real. And just trust and believe.
Force bought every one of your ideas on the new backup system. If this thing checks out, you'll be heading the entire project. It'll check out. You know, it seems to me I once heard there was a small company down in Texas working on a project like this. But something happened and they just didn't follow through. Did you ever hear about it? No. Mm -mm. Huh? Then there's just one thing that concerns me. You're going to have to pass one more really intensive security check, so I just hope there isn't anything or anybody. Oh, no, nothing. No one. Just thought I'd mention it. Go on back to work. We're all proud of you, Henry. I tried your apartment. The police were watching it. I thought I'd try here. So glad you came. I tried to get in touch with you, but you left no forwarding address. I didn't want to be disturbed. I came as soon as I saw the papers. Yeah, Avery. Has he tried to contact you? Well, Art, I helped him escape. Where is he now? I don't know. Why did you do it? I don't know. I wish you'd been there. I didn't know what to do. Just like it's his last link to sanity, that there is a real Henry Norman. A real Henry Norman? A fugitive. A fugitive? Do you think that's possible? I don't know. I believed him when I was with him. I just... I just don't know anything anymore. Now, try to remember. Did he have any kind of proof? No. Nothing. He just said all he wanted to do was get in the computer room. The computer room. I'm supposed to meet him at 11 o'clock with the keys. Did you get the keys? some kind of a plan. You've got to get out of here. The back way, preferably. I'll see if I can get some kind of diversion for our friend there.
Control, this is Station 2. Come in. Here's Hurley. Go ahead. Sheriff, we've got something on that Jensen kid. A lock, maybe. How good a lock? The best. Exactly where he'll be and when. When? The other car is covering the far side of the campus, Sheriff. Good. Now you cover the stadium entrance. You stay with me. Well, if he shows up, we've got him. I feel terrible about doing this. I really thought he was innocent. That's the only reason I let her go to him. Hey, Mr. Fletcher, would you mind telling me again exactly what he said? Well, he called just a few minutes after she left. And he sounded wild, deranged. I tried to reason with him. I begged him to turn himself in, to try and get some help. And? He became enraged. He said he'd kill before and he'd do it again if they tried to get him back there. After that, I guess my only thoughts were of Karen and how to save her from him. You know, it's kind of like you were telling me to shoot first and then put the pieces together later. I wouldn't want to tell you how to do your job. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. But if anything happens after what I've told you, it is your responsibility. Someone down here with a key. And the head shrinkers. It's all over, son. You come on now. It's all right, Sheriff. You're not going to need that. come to you. Do you want to go on with this dictation, Mr. Norman? No, just tell him that I'll see him at the meeting in San Francisco and sign it cordially. Henry, can I talk to you for a minute?
What is it, Bob? Well, Henry, I don't quite know how to say this, but... Uh, well, these men... These men tell me they have a report that a Henry Norman, a man who matches your background exactly, was killed a few hundred miles from here yesterday. Killed? Came through in a computer report. A computer report? Well, naturally, considering what you're involved in, that does raise certain questions. Who are they? Well, they're from Washington. They want to question you, that's all I know. All right. Well, let me get my pipe. government man's report and I, uh, well, I felt I owed it to you to come in and tell you about it myself. Now, this Henry Norman, or as you knew him, Arthur Fletcher, his real name was Hennessy, Claude Hennessy. He was part owner of a small electronics place down in Texas. Uh, kind of a scientific genius and a little bit cracked, too, like most of them. Uh, no offense. Anyway, one day, he and his partner get into a beef about who's to get credit for something they invented. And right there in the office, right in front of everybody, he shoots him. The people don't do a thing, they just stand there and look and let him walk out of the place. People will do that. Well, nobody ever saw him again, he just disappeared. Because he came here, he got this little job, couldn't just sit on it. He wanted to be back in the big time again. I think we know the rest of the story. Thank you, sir. Hey, tell me something. You killed them off with that computer, didn't you? I just programmed in a report of his death. The way we created him is the way he died. Well, that's what made him. And that's what killed him. What'd you put in that report? Just the date. And the phrase, accidental death. Nothing more. Why? Well, the report the feds picked up on, the one that sent them to check him out, said he jumped from a building. And they got it the day before it really happened. Who started that thing? Oh, it's being activated by another computer somewhere. Data seeking. Well, they're talking to one another. That's right. You know what I think? Pretty soon, they're not gonna need you. All they're gonna need is another Henry Norman.
do you think about that? Another Henry Norman. If at first you don't succeed. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, very funny. 